This is Scott Spears. Welcome to Scott Spears Now here on WGH Talk. And boy, do we have an episode today because we are going to recount the life and times of one of my favorite people. Really a pioneer on so many levels here in the Marion area and nationally. Recently, in December of 2022, a story went out over the National AP talking about this lady's remarkable life and times in museum, which, by the way, is at Heritage Hall here in Marion. Call, get the hours, go to that museum. It is something to behold. The memorabilia in there is amazing. She is the 40th treasurer of the United States. She was treasurer of Marion County, treasurer of the state of Ohio, only person ever to do that. She was recently inducted into the Marion County Hall of Fame, only person live ever to have that done. <laughs> and she's the only person living who has ever had a school name for her, Withrow, here in Marion, is of course named for Mary Ellen Withrow, Withrow Academy in Marion City Schools. What a pleasure and honor it always is, every time it has been for many decades now, and many decades to come, to be joined by Mary Ellen Withrow. Mary Ellen, Ah, it's always good to be with you. Well, thank you. It's good to be with you, Scott. <laughs> Mary Ellen, I want to talk about the museum because this is really something, this is a gem for Marion, and clearly the National News thought so as well, to do that great story on you uh, last December. Yes, that went all over. It did? Yeah. I, I didn't realize how far it had gone, um, <clears throat> but the uh, lady that did it had interviewed me when I ran for state treasurer. She was in Bucyrus at the time and um, so she contacted me and she's with AP now and it, it did, it went all over. It was a great story. Tell people how the museum came about. This was about a two-year process. Yes. Um, are you talking at, at the historical or at, at Primrose? What, yeah, it originally started at Primrose. Yes. Um, well, they, they asked me, they said, do you have anything we could put in a room for people to look at? And so I gave them everything I had, which wasn't very much at the time. And um, they, they really presented it well. They framed some things for me. And so then I kept finding things. My daughters, I had given things to my daughters because I wanted them to hang on to things for me. And so we, we kept gathering things until we had quite a, um, a good display. And this went on for like eight years. I mean, I, I couldn't find the John Glenn $20 bill for about four years. <laughs> and I, I tried everything to find out where it was. I, I put it somewhere where I could find it. And then I couldn't find it. It was after I moved. <laughs> and uh, and I was waiting on a group to come in one day, and I had all these uh, books with pictures in them on a table. And I was looking through these books, and I came on, there it was. It was in one of the books. Mm. And uh, so I was so happy I got it framed. And um, so then uh, we talked about what I was going to do because I'm not going to live forever and I wanted the museum to be somewhere where people could come and see it because they wouldn't be able to do that at Primrose, they wouldn't keep it there. So I talked to the Historical Society and they decided, we decided to have it there and I think it's worked out very well. There was a big party uh, back in May, I believe it was. Was it May or early June? Beginning of summer. Which party? The the unveiling of the museum at the Heritage Hall. Yes, it was, I, I don't know, it was May or sometime. May, but, yeah. but there was a big celebration and the governor, former governor of the state of Ohio, Ted Strickland, came down for this event. It was really a media frenzy and, and great uh, turnout from people in Marion. It was, it was, what did you make of that night? Oh, well, it was very nice, but, but I hadn't really had a chance to absorb where everything was in my museum, and I was trying to do that and talk to everybody, and it, it took me a while to locate some of my things that I wanted to make sure everybody saw. For instance, the Guinness Book of Records and 
and the um, John Glenn uh, information and and the Peter Max poster. I I uh, it, it was it was such a involved viewing that that I, I just couldn't find everything I wanted to find. So so I've thought about it for quite a while and uh, gave them some suggestions on what they could do uh, to maybe improve it and and I think they're going to. It's very interesting when you go in, The Sean and I toured it uh, that night, I believe we were the two, no, Terry was there. Yeah, but, I didn't get to do it. But Sean hasn't been, he'll, he's going to make it over there. Uh, but it's very interesting because there are pictures everywhere of all the great luminaries and celebrities that Mary Ellen has met, and there are awards that are just great. The Guinness Book of World Records uh, award is, is tremendous. And they took your dress that you were uh, sworn in in 1994, March of 94, as, as Treasurer of the United States. They took that dress and restored it and have put it in a case lighted. I, I mean, it is like um, anything you would see at a national museum. It's beautiful. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but the treasury seal is on the bottom of it. Oh, I did not notice. I'll have to yeah, look on, for that on next the time. case. Yeah. Oh. It, it's really neat. And then they had what they called the uh, treasurer's flag, which they had at, um, at the Marion Historical Society. And I don't know where they had gotten it because I hadn't seen it. So that's at the bottom of the dress uh, on the floor. And um, I, I, I wanted everybody to know what I did as U.S. Treasurer. I, I said, I, I don't know that they can pick it out of everything when they walk in there, but I said, I want them to realize that I redesigned the currency. I created the state quarters program and I created Sacagawea along with other people, but all of those things were created while I was there. And you would have treasures that came in there that not, nothing ever happened. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, those things were well known and, and, and that they would know who the pictures were. So we marked all the pictures the other day for them to put a, a little name on them, you know. I, I said who they all were. Uh, and those things still needed to be done. You know, uh, it's a very interesting thing because uh, I want to talk about this dress for one second because this is a funny story. Years ago, I had, had come across the video of Mary Ellen being sworn in. Uh, Al Gore was there and Lloyd Benson. It was a big, big ceremony in a room, a packed, packed room. And the funny thing was, uh, this was right after Mary Ellen had moved back to Marion, and I said, uh, Mary Ellen, I want you to come in and do a, a, a television program I'm doing. And I said, do you still happen to have that dress? Because people are fascinated with clothing. I don't know. And she said, well, I, I think I do, but, you know, let me try to find it. And she brought it in, and we hung it in the background, and she talked a little bit about it. And now all these years later, it's yeah. there on display yes, in the museum. Is. Yes, right. Are you fascinated? Because I know at that time you, you didn't think much of it. No. Are you fascinated by that people care that much about what you wore that day? Well, I you don't know if they... Do they really care? I don't know. When they come into a museum, do they want to know what I did or what I wore? You know, I'm surprised yeah. when, when Betty White recently died, but last year, they sold her clothes and they went for quite a bit of money. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it to some degree it is interesting to people to know what people wore. Uh, like I, Miss America's Dress, I believe, is at the Historical Society. Marilyn Meski. Is it? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Could be. It's, it's an interesting thing, but the things in there that are so important are the pictures and the awards. And it's, it's hard to understand, unless you lived in this time, uh, being here in Marion, when the quarter program came about, uh, people would go to the bank asking for $10 rolls of quarters so they could get the new quarters. That was so popular. How did that all come to be, Mary Ellen? Well, it, it was a situation where they were... It, they were copying a program in Canada, and they were talking about it, and they 
they were worried that there would be things on porters that would embarrass the government. And um, they said, they finally put in the law that the Secretary of the Treasury had to okay every, uh, everything that went on the quarters. And, and I said it, was, it would make a good working relationship between the state and the federal government. And I remember the uh, Secretary really agreed with that, and I think he felt the same way, that it would be a good thing because of that. And it was an interesting time. We had to create more nickels and dimes because everybody was saving their quarters and, and we were running out of nickels and dimes. <laughs> and, yeah, it, it was an exciting program and we went to all the dedications in the different states. Uh, I think... Um, I think Virginia maybe was the last one that I did. It was either Virginia or South Carolina. But um, it, there was so much fun with trying to decide what would be on the quarters. And um, they they wanted, well, they wanted Marilyn Monroe on the, on the quarter. <laughs> they wanted, you know, Elvis. <laughs> but it had to be a person that was not living and um, but it was a lot of fun. You know, one of the interesting things is uh, you're from Ohio. When things that had to do with Ohio came up when you were in office, like the Ohio Quarter, did that take special interest to you? Yes. Over other states? Oh, absolutely. It certainly did. And and it ended up we had three things on our quarter and I said that's too much. I said a quarter is only this big. I said you just want one thing on there but they they wanted to have all three things on so that's what we have. Want to get this on the record. Uh, where were you born? In Marion County. Now is the house still there that you were born yes. in? Yes. Now were you born in a hospital or a house? House. And it's still there? Yeah. Do you remember the address? It's on Moral Kirkpatrick Road. Um, I don't remember the address, but it, it, it's, uh, it's almost in um, Crawford County. It's not very far from the border. You know, I was thinking the other day that in Marion, of course, we have a historical landmark for Warren Harding. We have one for Norman Thomas, who was the big socialist who ran for president in the early 1900s. If one day there's a historical marker for Mary Ellen Withrow, where would you like it to be? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Norman Thomas is, is where his house was, but that's a parking lot now. <laughs> so poor Norman, his, his, his thing's in a parking lot, and people probably don't know why his house used to be there. That's why it's in that parking lot. You know, I went to a Norman Thomas school in New York City, and I asked them, I said, do you know where Norman Thomas was from? And they had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he, he, yeah, he kind of went on to other things. It wasn't so associated with, with Marion, Ohio anymore. Yes. You know, Mary Ellen, I often think about this. Marion, Ohio has a population in the county of about 65,000. Find any city, now I'm talking city, not state, city in the United States that has had, or county, let's go county, that has had a president, Warren G. Harding, treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, and a Miss America, Marilyn <laughs> Meski. That's very, I don't think there is another city or county in the, in the United States. I don't know. It's very, and what do you think it is? What did Marion County give you as you went on through your career, being here in the Midwest? Well, <clears throat> Marion County was um, a very industrious county when I was growing up. The Marion Power Shovel was booming and, and all of the industry in Marion was just booming. And it's very different now because we don't have very much. We still have Whirlpool and a few others, but uh, it was very industrial then. When you came, when you were born in Marion County, this is not terribly long after President Harding's presidency. Mm -hmm. Was he still seen as a big 
figure at that time because he hadn't been gone for very long? Well, I think so, yes. Uh, there was, they talked about him a lot, yet. What do you make overall of Harding? We have, now we have the memorial here, which people mm -hmm. visit, the schools, which are named after him, uh, the hotel, downtown is named for him. Overall, now that it's been 100 years since he was president, what do you make of, of Warren Harding? Well, I I think his memorial is one of the nicest memorials anywhere. I've always felt that we had a, a memorial that's beautiful. And, and it, um, it, you know, you look at some of the memorials and they're not anything as, as nice as that. Where did you go to school at? Harding. Harding. When you were going to Harding, what did you want to be? Did you have an idea of a career you wanted to go into or a, a anything at all? No, I didn't. Do you look back on that now and think you wish you'd have thought of something then or? No. No, I, everything worked out fine. <laughs> I think it did. I think it turned out okay. I think it ended up okay. Yeah. When you were in high school, were you involved in any clubs or? Oh, yes. Yeah, I was very involved in the the props and cues, the um, our props and cues club, our um, Latin club, our, um, let's see, what else? I, I was in an ensemble of of nine girls that we we sang everywhere and uh, I was in the choir too and I, w I was very active you know very active when you graduated high school what did what are those years between high school graduation and running for Elgin school board like what what was that period of time like well, I was having children. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep you busy. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much what was going on. And I was still very active in a lot of clubs. I, I liked to belong to things. I always felt that you could accomplish a lot more in a club than you could by yourself. Are you, are you surprised at the unfortunate demise of so many social clubs? Well, I'm not surprised because... It's, it's been a change of interest with people. Uh, they don't, uh, they, I don't think, want to go out at night that much anymore to a meeting. And I, I don't know, the, the things that you, you want to do change. When you got to the late 60s and the Elgin School Board, uh, this was a very big deal. First woman ever elected to Elgin School Board. How did that come to be? How did you decide you were going to run for this? Well, I had two teachers come and ask me to run, and uh, there were no women on the board, and I, I thought about it for a while, and Norman and I talked about it, and I said, well, I think I'm going to run. So I did, and it was... Uh, a race against uh, against five men, and and it, it was very hard for me. I I was not I was kind of a shy person, and um, I tell you all all the years of campaigning have totally changed me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> brought you out. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, but you know, it's it's very interesting because you were elected, and and for people who may be watching this years and years from now, this is hard to understand. But in in nineteen the late nineteen sixties, women could not get a credit card no. in their name. No. It was different times. That's right. Why do you think you won that race, running against these men? Well, <clears throat> I worked hard at it. I went door to door, which had never been done, and they told me my theme because I'd go to the door and I'd say, I'm running for this Elgin school board, I'm the only woman running, and they said, there, everybody said the same thing, there should be a woman on the board. And so um, I think that's, I think that was what really did it. What was it like being on Elgin school board? What were the big discussions? Money, money, teachers, kids, kids having trouble. <laughs> did did you like it? Uh, I it was okay. 
I, I would think that would be a very tough position, even now. It was tough. Yeah. yeah. I, I find school board members resign early from their terms. They get frustrated and don't run again. It seems like a very difficult position to be in. It, it is. Uh, there, there's, there was a lot of things that came up. It, for instance, hair on people's faces, the men's, boys' faces, the dress code, um, and money, and and um, yeah, it it was it was a training session for me. Um, but I I did I did enjoy it at the time. Uh, I think it, it, I, it, people start a lot of times on a school board, and I think it's a good place to start. How did you go from the school board to running for public office, and what was the first public office you ran for? I ran for clerk of courts, and I lost. And then I was going to run for clerk of courts again, and they wanted me to run for county treasurer. And, and so then I, then I did. Um, Ralph Wagner was county treasurer at the time, and he was going to retire. And I announced I was, I was running, and then he decided to run again. And they threatened him with a lawsuit on his DUIs, and uh, so he decided not to run. <laughs> that, that, it was probably a good thing for him at the time. <laughs> but then I ran against a, a man that had a, a frozen food locker. Um, oh, what was his name? I I can't remember his name, but um, but in between that, I was I had the license bureau, and I had it for three years. Gilligan was was governor, and I I called and I I talked to the chief of staff. I said, I just ran for clerk of courts and I lost, and I said um, I need to get my name known. And I said the the license bureau is the best place to do that because everything that comes out of there has your name on it. And so um, then I got I got the uh, license bureau and I had it for three years. And then when I ran for county treasurer, I won with sixty four percent of the vote. When you look back at that clerk of courts race, the only election you ever lost, what do you think was the reason that well, you people didn't know me? Um, I didn't, I didn't have a committee. I didn't spend enough money. It, it, yeah. You know, we look at it now and it's completely different, the fundraising in 2023. But how important were funds and how did you raise them back in, in the 1970s? Well, I, I went to Fahey Bank and borrowed money. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, talk about the difference between the cost now to run for state treasurer, for instance. It was, um, well, Gertrude Donahue was state treasurer and she, she said uh, she couldn't raise $750 to run for her fourth term. And she asked me to run, uh, either to run for uh, state treasurer or secretary of state to try to uh, hold the positions until she could make up her mind whether she was going to run or not. It took her a while, but she finally decided. So I ran for state treasurer. It was very tough. I had no money. And um, when when they finally realize that you might win, you can raise money then. That's when it happens. So, uh, and I, I give a lot of credit to Dick Celeste because he paid for my TV. I had one TV spot where I said, I really want the job. And, and it was very effective. And, um, and I won. When we look back at Elgin School Board, to the Clerk of Courts race, to the License Bureau, to Treasurer of Marion County, what, when did the drive to win and participate in politics come about? How did that develop? It developed when I ran for the school board. You like that? I did. Um, I was just fascinated with it. 
Now, this is very interesting, and I still think this is a great idea today. One of the things you did when you were running for office is you came up with an idea. And now you got to remember, this: there's no internet in these days. There's no... Um, it's difficult to get anything done in these days. I mean, it's encyclopedias and, and Xerox machines and things like that. You came up with recipe cards yes. to give to people. Yes. Now, t tell how that came to be and what you would do with those. Well, everybody saves recipes. If you're a woman, you see a recipe, you hang on to it. <laughs> and so I, I put my information about running for county treasurer on uh, my leaflet and I put recipes on there and people still have them. Well, and it's interesting because you have to understand, and again, it's a different time, every woman or man really in those days had a recipe box in their kitchen. Mm -hmm. And you would put those, re they were on the back of Cool Whip uh, containers and things, and people would keep those if it was a good recipe. Right. So that is such an, I think that is such an ingenious idea at the time because nobody, you would get a, a, a mailer, you might throw that away, but you're not going to throw away a good recipe. That's right. Yes, you get a mailer, you do throw it away. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite recipe? Well, I, you know, my waffle <laughs> recipe that, that we've had a lot of fun with. Um, I have some favorite recipes, but um, I don't cook much anymore. Uh, I, I don't, um, I, I eat at Primrose, and, <laughs> and I don't have to cook as much, and when I do, uh, it doesn't always turn out well. <laughs> now, the, you recently, though, made the, the bars. Yes. Those, now, what are those called again? Gumdrop bars. Gumdrop bars. bars. Those yeah. are delicious. They are good, but I, I had an experience with the gumdrop and my teeth just recently, so I'm not... I'm, <laughs> <laughs> not one of your favorite things I'm to go back to. not having any more gumdrop bars. No more bars. gumdrop bars at this <laughs> no. time. Um, but when we look back, uh, county treasurer, what was it like to be Marion County Treasurer? Oh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, they, well, they, we, we had a big vault in my office. In fact, um, Jan Draper just gave me a lot of uh, things that were in the vault that that uh, were mine that they just they that were still there. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I I loved taking care of money, um, and I loved the 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 ability to to do new things to improve the system because it really needed to be done. And so that that was that was great. I really liked it. We got to take a short time out here. We're coming back with Mary Ellen Withrow. We're going to talk about an incident with the vault door here in Marion, and also state treasurer and treasurer of the United States. We're coming back. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Scott Spears back here with the 40th treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow. Now, one thing I want to do is uh, show some pictures here because these pictures are very interesting. Uh, Mary Ellen, this one is a very popular one. You <laughs> with the gold bars. Yes, at West Point. West Point. You can't take pictures at Fort Knox, but you can at West Point. Oh, okay. And these are real gold bars. Yes, they're heavy. I bet they are. Yeah, they're heavy. And this picture, I believe, is when you were treasurer of the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, was this a regular thing that they, they had pictures taken? Yes, they, that's my picture they took, and they still have it. In fact, I, I gave a speech over the phone, and they put my picture up for people to look at. Was this it? This, this was back about eight years ago. And then this one's one of my favorites. I think that, and then this, I believe, was when you were treasurer of the United States. No, I was state treasurer. State tre oh, state yeah. treasurer. Yes, yeah. this is state treasurer. That's a great picture. Yeah. Well, those are the ones I sent in to the uh, Historical Society for the plaque. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the plaque eventually will be at Heritage Hall. Yes. And that, what was that like? The, the just being inducted into that, the first live person, because if you don't know, 
there are people in the Marion County Hall of Fame, but the rule used to be you had to have passed away. You would think you were the first one who was live to do that. I don't know that you had to have passed away, but they did. Right. That's, that's, uh, I, I don't know the rule on that. <clears throat> so that, that night, as far as just the honor of it, what was that like? Oh, it was great. It was a wonderful evening. And I, I tell you, I'll never forget. It was a wonderful evening. Now, t we, we teased before we went to break there, your story with the vault door in Marion <laughs> County. Yes. What happened? Well, when I was running for office, you know how they will say things that you can't do or you won't be able to do. They said I wouldn't be able to open the vault door. And so we, I won the election and then I was treasurer and one morning I came to work and I couldn't open the vault door. <laughs> the, uh, the, the cleaning lady had washed down the front of the vault and froze the tumblers. And uh, so we had to get a, um, somebody to come open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Now, being treasurer of Marion County, you talked about Gertrude Donahue coming to you to run for state treasurer. Why did she come to you of the people she would have had the, the chance to approach? I don't know. She, she asked me if, if I would uh, run for state treasurer. What kind of lady was she? <clears throat> well, she was a very popular lady. She had a big embezzlement going on, and that was the problem. So um, I think that's the reason she felt she wasn't going to be able to raise the money. And everybody, everybody liked her. You win the state treasurer's race. What was that night like, knowing that you were going from Marion County to the state? I, it was a blur. I, I, it was just... You, you exist and you don't understand why you're existing. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you watch the results at? In, in the hotel in, in Columbus. Um, I, I think it was the Marriott. I'm not sure. Now the first race was against Buck Reinhardt. Yes. Who was a very well-known uh, politician in Columbus. He was the um, county treasurer of Franklin County. And went on to become... <laughs> Uh, mayor of Columbus. Later on. Later yeah. on. Mm -hmm. What do you think gave you the edge in that race? Well, there were many things. Um, we were both in the county treasurer's organization, and all the county treasurers were supporting me because they, they didn't like him. And... Um, I think that had a big influence. Um, I was the only woman running in the state, whole state, uh, for anything. And it was easy for people to remember that my name, that I was a woman because my name is Mary Ellen. And, um, and it was interesting from the fact that, that Buck Reinhardt's name was Dana Reinhardt. And Celeste offered to uh, give me a, a um, spot on TV. And it was at that point that Buck Reinhardt realized he had to do a spot on TV, which would show that he was not a woman, that Dana was, you know, it could be a woman's name. And, and I did not realize all of this until I had a conversation with Jerry Austin the other day who did the, the spot. And he, he told me from this, from this um, standpoint, uh, it was, that might have been what, how Buck Reinhardt lost the race. Really? Yes, because I was running for a woman's position because she was... In the Gertrude Donahue was in the office, and um, I was the only woman running. You don't know what people are thinking when they vote, but you can just try to imagine whether this was it or not. So, 
That's very interesting. How was being treasurer of Marion County different from treasurer of the state? Smaller. I said it's just a smaller kitchen. <laughs> uh, it was, you go from, I had five employees in Marion County and I had 182 in the state. Now, you were state treasurer for how long? Three terms, 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. 1994 comes about mm -hmm. and you're being approached to run for governor. Yes. Which no woman had done at that point. No. What what happened and how did that not come to be and Treasurer of the United States did come to be? Now for people, Bill Clinton was elected in 92 uh, against incumbent President George H.W. Bush, the father. Bill Clinton takes office in January of 93 and this is all happening in the beginning of 94. Well, the women executives of state government called and wanted to know if I was interested in it, and I said I was. And, and then the, um, the Democratic chairman of the United States was from Ohio, and he called and wanted to know if I was interested. I said I was. And so then I talked to um, John Glenn and, and Metzenbaum. They were both the in office at the time and, and of course there was a lot of people after the uh, treasurer's position and and it went on until um, the summer of 90, 94 or 93 when um, I was told it was down to two people uh, a woman from Colorado who had lost a a race for the Senate, I think it was, or Congress, I forget which. But, um, and then it was November 22nd of 1993. I can remember that because it's when John Kennedy was his, mm -hmm. when he was killed, it was the anniversary. And uh, they said I had the job, but I couldn't tell anybody. And so, um, I was, I couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet that was a good Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did, did at any point during that time you talk to, uh, did you talk with uh, President Clinton or Vice President Gore? Yes. I, I, Vice President Gore was a big supporter for me. And, um, and Lloyd Benson called me and I talked to him. And, um, and then, then I, I met with all of the finance committee um, one at a time and somebody would, from Treasury would go with me and Moynihan was chairman of the committee and I remember um, meeting with all of them. It was interesting. When you took office in March of 94, what do you remember about that day? Lloyd Benson was there, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Al Gore, Vice President. What, what was that day like? Well, it was a big day. <laughs> it was very, very exciting, and I was very excited, and I had promised somebody I'd go to the post office meeting that night, and it was their big uh, meeting in Alexandria, I think it was, and and we went to that and um, got lost on the subway coming home. <laughs> <laughs> we were living in a hotel. When I signed in at the hotel, it said your home address. I said, I don't have a home address. <laughs> and we lived in a hotel for about a week until we got a place to live. We rented for a, for a month until we bought a house. <laughs> so, so Mary Ellen, congratulations to you. And now, uh, if you will, uh, stand here and uh, Norm here and come on in close ranks if you wish. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. 
Uh, I state your name. I, Mary Ellen Withrow. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. The job of treasurer started in 1777. That means it's older than the Treasury Department. Alexander Hamilton didn't become Secretary of the Treasury till 12 years later. And all that time, we have never had a treasurer that's gone from county treasurer to state treasurer to national treasurer. Mary Ellen is our first, and we're proud of that one. Over time, people have called the currency many things. They've called it greenbacks, bills, dollars. But one word I know that Buckeyes like to use is bucks. <laughs> Five bucks, 10 bucks. Well, it's Treasury Secretary. I want to say something to you, Mary Ellen. If I ever find out that you're autographing our dollar bills, Mary Ellen Withrow, go Bucks. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider that a bit much. <laughs> but now it's my honor to introduce... tell you that even before this occasion, marking the formal beginning of uh, her, her service, she has been uh, deep in meetings with uh, uh, members of the reinventing government team, uh, and they've been discussing all kinds of ideas. I have to tell you, I think that our reinventing government experts may have learned more from Mary Ellen than Mary Ellen learned from them, because she was already way up to speed on a lot of new ideas to bring uh, efficiency and reinvention and a new standard of excellence to the important duties that she is about to perform. <laughs> when I first uh, went into public service on a local school board in 1969, I had no idea it was going to lead me here. After uh, 25 years, a quarter of a century from Marion, Ohio to Washington, D.C., and I have loved every step of the way. Um, I wanted to just present something to the secretary and the vice president that I have with me today. We're talking about bucks. And we're talking about uh, uh, greenbacks, and I want to say there are a lot of Buckeyes in this room, I know. <laughs> and we're proud to be Buckeyes, right? Well, I'd like to present one to the Vice President, <laughs> and one to Mr. Secretary, 
And we've adopted this resolution, uh, there be therefore resolved that the President of the United States is to be congratulated for his selection of our colleague, Ohio Treasurer of State, Mary Ellen Withrow, for this important position. The National Association of State Treasurers expresses its appreciation to Ohio Treasurer of State, Mary Ellen Withrow, for her leadership, her service to NAST, and her friendship. The National Association of State Treasurers wishes you success in your new position as Treasurer of the United States of America. Oh. Well, we have a lot of wall space that we're, we're going to put this one up there and, and you've seen the other things on the wall. We've, we were, they were hanging everything yesterday so it was all hung just recently. This is very lovely. I, I'm going to miss all of you but I want you all to come and be here and see me and and visit me and and so 
I just, uh, I really was happy to have all of you here. It worked out so beautifully to have the, the group uh, here when I was sworn in. We'll take the bills, the dollars, the bucks, the windows, <laughs> anything you say. I want to know when the first ones with her signature are coming out. I think, I think March, we ought to be in the ground floor. I think March 16th, I've already seen it. It is just beautiful. <laughs> I couldn't hardly let it uh, go wherever it had to go. <laughs> you can yes. take it home with you. You can really see it's my name. So, uh, yeah, they had to do it uh, 32 times. And, um, Eagle something or another. I don't even know the name of it, so I'll find out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, do you know the stamp that is um, was accidentally printed upside down? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not yeah. Owner. This is it. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the one. There. Yeah. In fact, yeah, they've uh, they've got they've had something around that. It's called the Jenny, wasn't it? Was that the name of it? But it's upside down. Uh, mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, and you know, I pr I'll be printing the stamps, too. Mm -hmm. So, they wanted to hang it where the light wouldn't um, yeah, yeah. dull it, you know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So, so how old? 1923? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1934, 33, and 27. And, um... See, I don't know what the earliest one is. Uh, <laughs> There's a 1918. Is there? Right there uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The top. yeah. So and somebody asked me, that's, that's the seal there. That's my seal, too. So. Yeah. Okay. You mean the U.S. Treasury seal? Yes. Uh -huh. Same as President. No. Oh, yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. Is this what you want? Uh huh. No. Okay. Yes. All right. Well. Well, what do you think of today? Yeah. It's great. Your speech was unbelievable. Oh, it was yeah. great. Your speech was really good. A lot of people commented. Well, and Lloyd Benson, they're all speeches. I want a picture taken. It's old. You didn't get a picture taken. I want to get a picture taken. What was the process of coming up with the signature that went on the money? Well, that happened before I was sworn in. Um, I, my uh, predecessor went to prison, so they had a felon's name on the money, and they did not want that to be on there any longer than possible. So they brought the pen and paper to the airport when I was getting ready to fly back to uh, Ohio and I was signing it and I was people it was crowded and I went over by the telephones and tried to sign over there and people were bumping me and I went back in the private room and signed my name 20 times and I marked number 12 and that's what was on the money. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. And 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 what was it about that that stuck out to you? Why was that the one, number 12? It was the one that looked the best. The one that looked the best. Mm -hmm. Now, when you sign money, being in the Guinness Book of World Records for signing more currency than anybody else, when you sign pictures or sign money, it, is it important for you to look as close as possible to that signature? Oh, yes, yeah. I try to, but... Yeah. My signature isn't quite as good, you know, quite as good as it was. I have to, um, I have to go a little bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are two historic events that happened while you were treasurer of the United States from '94 till January of 2001. Uh, the first one, uh, not a great event, was the Monica Lewinsky scandal oh, that yes. went on with yeah. President Clinton. When that was all going on. And then for people who don't remember, Monica Lewinsky was an intern and President Clinton had lied about having a relationship with her and there was an impeachment. He was not removed, but he was impeached. What was it like in Washington at that time? Well, the um, government was shut down. It was quiet. And I, I had to still come to work because we were manufacturing money every day. And... Um, when I would go out and speak, um, and especially at schools, children would ask me if I knew President Clinton. And I said, yes, he appointed me. And they'd go, <gasps> like that. Oh. And I said, I wish he could hear that, you know? You know, there's a great story that I did not hear. Uh, you told it on the air. I want you to tell it here about John Glenn, astronaut, uh, great Ohio politician who was still in office in, mm -hmm. in uh, that era, came to your office while this is all going on. And, and yeah. tell that story. That's fascinating. Well, he said, you know, he said, if if that hadn't happened, if the Monica Lewinsky, uh, Lewinsky situation hadn't happened, he would have been a great president. I said, that's right. I said, now this is all they'll remember. He said, I know. Now that we look back on that, more than 20 years later. Do you, is that the thing that when President Clinton goes that will be in the first paragraph? Usually, mm -hmm. yeah, but he was a great president. He balanced the budget for the first time and he had a wonderful economic situation while he was um, president and Everybody liked him, you know. Well, it's interesting because the, the Bushes have said this. He became good friends with the yeah. Bushes. And George W. Bush said it is impossible not to like Bill Clinton. That's right. What is it about him? You've, you've been with him. It's his personality. Um, people would not like him and they'd talk to him and then they'd come away. They liked him. That's the way he was. And, and they said, you know, he'd have a... Uh, disagreement with somebody and, and then he'd ask them to play golf the next day, you know. Yeah, well, to, to be friends with the Bushes and they were very close there toward the end of yes, H.W. Bush's life. Yeah. So even Barbara Bush ended up liking Bill Clinton. Yes, right. it's, it's a fascinating story. Uh, the other thing that happened, if you go back to the year 2000, uh, Bill Clinton is not running, well, he, he run his two terms. 
We have George W. Bush running on the Republican side, Al Gore running, he was the vice president at that time on the Democratic side. Election night comes, and Al Gore had already come to you and asked you if you would continue on in that position if he was elected, and everything in the world breaks loose on election night. They give the state of Florida to Al Gore, then they give it to George W. Bush, then they take it out of both their columns, and the thing goes on for about three weeks before yes. it's all settled. Knowing that your fate hung in the balance at this mm -hmm. time, what did you make of that election? I tell you, it was a terrible time, and um, it people do not realize what we were all going through, really. Um, and then when it was finally announced, we felt like it wasn't correct, you know. Um, it just didn't seem like it was correct with the Supreme Court. You had been there six years at that point. What was it like only having a month, really, from because it was early December, I think, when that was finally decided, till Bush was inaugurated on January 20th. What was that month like? Well, we had to um, get everything to the um, to the library that you know was important, and um, I I couldn't get anybody to move my things until they said we had to be out by January 19th. And I, the Secret Service then said they'd watch my things until I could get them out. So, and it was like uh, about the next day, I think I, I got the, the uh, things moved. But um, it was kind of frantic, you know. When you left office after all the years, really with no stop, Elgin School Board, Marion County Treasurer, License Bureau, Treasurer of the State of Ohio, Treasurer of the United States, and now all of a sudden, January of 2001. Yes. What What was that like? It was It was kind of bad. I I went through a depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody said you get in the Secret Service car and it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, how How were you able to get through that time? Well, I I went through I went to a depression thing at one of the churches. <laughs> they, somebody told me you ought to do that, you know. And I was I was terribly depressed, and um, yeah, I I got over it. <laughs> well, it's, it's a tough thing, you know. People, yeah. I can't imagine going through something like that, especially that way. If it had happened on election night, maybe yeah. it would have been a landslide. Might have been a little easier. Yes, that's right. And somebody said to me once, well, you knew you weren't going to always be there. I said, yes, but I said it was the way it ended. It was terrible. Yeah. What do you, th aside from the Supreme Court and how they decided that election, what do you think was Al Gore's mistake? He was coming off a popular president mm -hmm. who had won big in both of his races, and it all came down to one state for Al Gore. He lost his home state in that election. Well, I think he should have used uh, President Clinton. He didn't. He was upset with President Clinton because of the uh, uh, Monica Lewinsky situation. And uh, I think if he'd have had uh, President Clinton out there working for him, I think he'd have won. In the early 2000s, right after that had all happened, you'd left office. Did you ever think at that point, or were you ever approached about staying in politics or doing another job that maybe you would want to do? No. No. Did you ever think you wanted to go back to work doing something? Well, I thought about it, but um, it, it just, there, there really wasn't anything that I really wanted to do. What has the last 22 years now been like? How would you qualify this, this time uh, with no work? You know, that's a good question. I I really, of course, I, I was taking care of Norman for quite a while. And um, we, we were able to do things up until, you know, about three years before he died. But um, we stayed in, in Washington for, uh, we were there until 2011. 
And then he started to get it, getting, so I thought we better get back to Marion because his health wasn't very good. So uh, we came back to Primrose and um, then I was, we had a good time at Primrose and enjoyed that. At this point, well, first of all, talk a little bit about your husband. You were married over 70 years. Yeah, 72 years. 72 years. How yeah. do you do that? Well, I don't know. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly did. He, I, he was really supportive of my political life. Um, and that, that was tremendous because you can't do it without that. You have to have your, your husband's support. And he, he really enjoyed himself. Uh, he he would um, you know just be himself and 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 watch out for me you know and and it it made a big difference. Very good golfer. Yeah. Oh gosh, yes. He he uh, he was tremendous. And then he started collecting antique pocket watches, <laughs> and that involved him. There would be days that he didn't. He, he would, I'd be gone and he didn't know I was gone. He was so busy with his watches. <laughs> you know, I, I, w one of my favorite stories about, about Norm was I was, I would come to visit Mary Ellen about something and we were talking and he was off in the other room and I, Mary Ellen had left to go to another room to do something and he said, Come here for a second. And he was showing me these watches, and he was just the nicest man. Uh -huh. You know, we had not spent a whole lot of time together in life, but he just, it was like yeah. you were his best friend when you met him. He was so nice and just a very, very nice man. Yeah. He he belonged to three watch clubs while we were in Washington, and he was he was just really enjoying it. And and he was playing golf at all the golf courses. and. <laughs> He, he used Al Gore's name as a recommendation in one of the, <laughs> for one of the memberships. We, we got a big kick out of that. that. That's not bad. That's a good name to drop. It, it's it a, went right through. It went right through. Yeah. When, when you look at this point, you know, you, you've had a tremendous life. When you look back on it, do you ever think, wow, that was something? Oh, yeah. I don't know how I did it. You know, you... you you look at how hard those things were to accomplish, and I really don't know how I did it, yeah. You know, one of the things that's very difficult in life, and everybody goes through it, uh, you had the, the um, Al Gore election loss having to leave, and you talked about the depression there, and, and losing a husband after 72 years of marriage. How do you get through those things? What, what could you tell somebody? How do you, how do you keep going on? Well, it's life. You just gotta. I, I enjoy my life. Yeah, I, I'm a happy person. Yeah. When somebody says Mary Ellen Withrow, when you drive by a school, and you know it's named after you, is it ever a, a different feeling? Well, I'm I'm really proud that I have two schools named after me. Really, I never thought that would happen. What was that like? I mean, that's a big deal. Yes, I I was shocked when they called and told me, and I was trying to think. What what are those schools? I mean, I got to make sure this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was uh, it was a real surprise when that happened. <laughs> it's it's fascinating because today I'll hear kids talk. I I go to Withrow, and I think, well, yeah, there you <laughs> there you go. It's 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 such a great life. If you were writing it for yourself. Well, how would you describe it? What what would you say it was like, the whole thing? Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> really. I mean, if somebody had told me that's what I was going to do, I, I would have been shocked, you know, because I had no idea what I was going to end up doing. And um, I, I really feel that people should take their, uh, they should take advantage of things that, they have the opportunity to do and not worry about, um, you know, whether they're ready for it or not. So many times I've heard people say they, they needed to do this or that before they ran for office or something. And I thought um, that moment that you make a decision to do something like that, it's, it's got to be the right moment. And um, 
it, it, it doesn't always, you don't always realize it, you know. When you look back on the life, are there any regrets, anything you wish you had done? Well, I, I, I don't think so. I think I'll take it just the way it was. Do you think it was luck, drive? How did it all come together? Well, it's hard to judge. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. want to talk about this, because this is important. Women. You clearly were a pioneer for women when they start out by saying, uh, you talk about your career, it's always first woman elected to Elgin School Board. A lot of the positions you held, women were not successful at them or did not have those positions. You were approached about running for governor in the 1990s. You would have been the first woman who ran for governor in Ohio on a major party ticket. It didn't happen until almost 30 years after that with Nan Whaley being the first woman to get that. What advice could you give to women, and why is it harder for women? Well, I, I think there's a lot more women doing everything now than there was. I mean, we've made improvement. We've still got a ways to go. Um, people are not always sure that women can handle the situation. They, they sometimes look at it that, Maybe I shouldn't vote for her because I don't know if she can do the job or not. And um, and I don't know. Uh, it's just because, probably because they've never had a woman in that position before because other countries, you know, we've had other countries that had women as the leaders of their countries and they've done a fine job. Um, we almost had Hillary Clinton, who would have been a great president. Um, so uh, I, I think that um, it, it's, it's hard to judge what people think and why they decide what they decide. When we sit here, hopefully one day there'll be a female president, hopefully a female governor, maybe a female mayor here in Marion at some point. At this point, there's not 103 years after women got the right to vote. Why do you think it still hasn't happened? I don't know. Um, we've got a lot of women governors now in other states. Um, they're, they're good governors. You know. um, what they say? Is there 12, 12 women governors? And, and they're doing a good job. You've got a long ways to go yet, but when people open up those history books after all of us are gone in this room at this time, because people are going to drive by your school, they'll be at the Historical Society, your museum's there, you are in the history books, how would you like to be remembered by people who knew you? <laughs> well, I just want them to remember that I had a good time. <laughs> and, and I have had a good time knowing Mary Ellen. we got a minute left, and what I want to say is, most things I have ever asked Mary Ellen to do, she has done, from being in a room with a six-foot groundhog to being at root beer stand openings to the Bratwurst Festival, and it is always a joy. Mary Ellen, it's always a pleasure to be with you. It's been just the best, and it will continue to be. Well, I enjoy being with you. Yes. Mary Ellen Withrow, a treasure, and will be here for a while. And by the way, call the Historical Society, go see the museum, and if you're lucky enough, Mary Ellen will be there and can tell you about some of those personal stories of things in that museum. A treasure for women, Marion, and all of us citizens here. Mary Ellen Withrow, Scott Spears, heading for the dugout.